Warning, the following podcast contains words that would make Winnie the Pooh faint. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Adam and Eve, Stamps.com, and by Noah talking Eli out of saying butt stuff in every commercial. Noah talking Eli out of shit, the primary reason we still have an income. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hey, Sean here from SpeedCubeReview.com. I can solve a Rubik's Cube in under 10 seconds thanks to these opposable thumbs, which is evidence that we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey men. It's March 18th, and we'll acknowledge the fuck out of your gay marriage. Absolutely. Unless you don't have an open bar. We need an open bar. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Aaron Burrs, New Jersey, Cincinnati (laughs) Red State and Red Town Blue State, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, the good Pope is still a shitty person. Mm -hmm. Matt Powell debunks the farting wing of evolution theory, but he does not debunk his beds. <laughs> Christians will have inadequate penises. But first, the diatribe. It's so weird how there are no calls to stop and frisk young white Christian men today. So weird how we're all withholding judgment and assessing all the various possible motivations in a way that we just don't when somebody from any other religious demographic kills people. And despite the overwhelming number of terrorist attacks and mass murders in this country coming from young, white, conservative Christian men, nobody's calling on the churches and Christian organizations to take responsibility. Of course, look, I'm hesitant to talk about any of this because we're recording early on Wednesday, so we're very much still in the media holding pattern. And by the time you hear this, you'll probably know a lot more than I do now. But what we know right now is that a 21-year-old, very Christian man from North Georgia was arrested after a murder spree in the Atlanta area left eight people dead. Now, six of the eight victims were Asian women, and so the initial media assumption largely revolved around a racist motivation. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Like hate crimes against Asian Americans are skyrocketing ever since then president racist McRacist face decided to stoke the flames of hate with every passing opportunity. But when it comes to men mass murdering women, I, I feel like the default assumption probably should be sexism. I, you know, look, I don't mean to downplay the severity of the racism that Asian Americans are dealing with right now or the clear racial motivations in this crime, I, like, given the demographics of the area. It is impossible that he wasn't specifically targeting Asian people, but I find it distressingly easy to believe that the killer didn't consider it racially motivated. After all, everybody who says I'm not racist, but actually believes that half of the sentence, or at least most of them do. That being said, there's been a long string now of young white guys killing women, and thus far their primary motivation has consistently been because those men were mad at their dicks. And at least so far, that seems to be the case here. Again, very early media reports to work off of, but it's looking an awful lot like a hyper-Christian loser that couldn't get laid without paying for it, getting really angry at all the harlots that tempted him away from the pure light of Jesus. The, the, The term sex addiction is getting thrown around a lot in the media. That's not a thing, by the way. I'm no psychologist, but it's not in the DSM-5. The majority of psychologists reject it. In our long history of trying to classify sexual behavior that falls outside of the puritanical American norm as mental illness has been wrong a hell of a lot more often than right. It's a bullshit concept crafted by prudes to demean sexual freedom and perpetuated by politicians who want to make extramarital affairs sound like something they can overcome with their gumption. At its best, it's a pathway to sexual anxiety and repression. At its worst, it's the motive for a murder spree. But it's also the inevitable result of Christianity's effort to control and repress people's sexual urges. If you're told from before puberty that you shouldn't touch yourself and you shouldn't watch other people touch themselves and you shouldn't want to touch yourself every time you think about watching other people touch themselves, post-pubescent you is left with two options. Either... 
You can jettison the bullshit belief structure that told you a natural, healthy sex drive was sinful, or you can live your life feeling that you're broken and unworthy of God's love. And of course, the hope of the church is that you land on that second choice. Keep in mind, this is not a byproduct of some other goal. This is not a side effect. This is the reason they promote this repressive, puritanical bullshit. The whole purpose is to reinforce this fiction that you're born with the lingering stench of sin. And no matter how moral your choices, no matter how ethical your actions, you are a den of transgressions and shortcomings, and you always will be. You are broken, and only Jesus can fix you. And to achieve that, they use the same method as any totalitarian government. You just take something that everybody's doing and you declare it illegal. And it's the same way that America uses drug laws until white people start doing that particular drug. Ideally, you take stuff that people couldn't stop doing, even if they wanted to. You create an impossible minimum expectation and then you load a motherfucker up with guilt every time they fall short of it. Hell, in this case, they even add an omniscient being that can see every transgression, even if you don't get caught. Hell, even the ones you don't make. Right, Because with Christianity, even temptation to sin is enough to trigger the guilt. Where a sane person would see overcoming that temptation towards an indecent act as a sign of moral fortitude, Christianity still defines that as a failing. Even wanting to sin is a sin. Now, I guarantee goddamn to you that we're going to spend the next week or two here in Pundit's retreat to their partisan corners to blame their villain du jour. And some of that's going to be legitimate. Much of it's not going to be. But virtually nobody will talk about the elephant in the fucking room. Virtually none of them are going to talk about the sexual repression that sits at the very heart of fundamentalist philosophy, which is weird because they'd sure as hell do that if the shooter's dad was in a mom. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Heath and Eli to my Noah Heath and right and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you just plain ready? And that's the end of the show. Podcast <laughs> retired. <laughs> Sorry, we, we had a good run, go. guys. We had a good run. <laughs> as long as I had new triplets. <laughs> it was all a dream inside Jerry Falwell's snow globe, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wake up next to Florence Henderson or whoever that was. <laughs> In our lead story tonight, the Catholic Church did something horribly evil. That is way less problematic than normal. So, well, thank you. <laughs> That's a win for them, I guess. Rather than sexual abuse, it's only bigotry. So that's cool. They were asked about whether a priest can bless a same-sex union. Apparently, there was some confusion about their stance on that. <laughs> so they offered some official guidance, again, more, regarding exactly how much bigotry should apply to their magic spells going forward. And the answer is... Still all of it. Yep. Still mm -hmm. doing yeah. the whole amount of bigotry. According to the Vatican, they will not allow same-sex marriages to get a blessing. Yeah, and, and look, I said it on Facebook, but I'll say it again. They don't have the authority to tell anybody whether or not same-sex marriage is moral. So all they're telling us is whether or not they are moral. And we already knew. Yep. yep. Hey, everybody, it's -a me, the Catholic Church. Just thought I'd take a little break from my decades-long pedophilia scandal and telling people not to get a life-saving vaccine to act as a moral authority. You ready? Don't fuck dudes. Okay, back to pedophilia. Yeah, right. Cool. Right. Glad we clarified. That was <laughs> That's important. That's their march. <laughs> so this official ruling comes from the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. Doctrine of Faith. You might remember them from... Uh, doing the Inquisition. Yep, that, that was, was them. That was <laughs> Seems like it might eliminate that department from the yes, corporate structure right. at this point. You figure management's going to find, you know, a few redundancies after your team does a fucking genocide. But no, still a thing. And according to them, according to the Inquisitor team, quote, it is not licit to impart a blessing on relationships or partnerships, even stable, that involve sexual activity outside of marriage, i.e., outside the indissoluble union of a man and a woman open to the transmission of life. The presence in such relationships of positive elements, which are in themselves to be valued and appreciated. So, yeah, that was nice of them to Yeah, add. right. Cool. No, I was they threw them a little <laughs> bone there. Yeah. The presence of positive elements cannot justify these relationships, since the positive elements exist within the context of a union not ordered to the creator's plan. Jesus quote, Christ. Official statement like, from the Inquisitors. Like success for liberal Catholics at this point is forcing the bigotry to be more verbose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all that sounds pretty bad. But they did explain how technically all those 
uh, abominational people in their opinion, they get blessed a la carte, technically. <laughs> they just can't have their union of sin mm -hmm. get blessed as part of like a package deal. <laughs> Here's the concession statement that, that followed <laughs> what we just heard. Just a reminder, the last thing we heard was basically, fuck you, your love is a glitch in God's matrix. Yep, Continuing yep. Mm -hmm. from there, quote, at the same time, the church recalls that God himself never ceases to bless each of his pilgrim children in this world because we are more important to God than all of the sins that we commit. But he does not and cannot bless sin. He blesses sinful man so that sinners can recognize that they're part of his plan of love and allow themselves to be changed. God takes us as we are, but never leaves us as we are. And quote, that they're really proud of the little stupid parallel structure thing at the end. Jesus fucking. In other words, it's okay to bless gay people because eventually maybe they'll stop being that. Yeah. Literally, God, yes. God loves you so much. He ignores the disgusting, revolting abomination that is the way you love. Oh, God, we nailed it. We nailed it. We <laughs> yep. did such a good yep. job. Concession statement. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Softened it. And just for the record, about 73% of Catholic people disagree with the church's horrible bigotry on this topic. Yeah. Which means about 73% of Catholics should stop. Yeah. Should stop being mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Plus a bunch of other Catholics who support hating gay people, but maybe they're against, um, I don't know, kid fucking. Yeah, the raping. Bottom line, <laughs> the Vatican will not allow Catholic people in same-sex marriages or unions to get blessed by a guy in a silly hat who hates them, despite all the demand that somehow exists for that. <laughs> Stop being Catholic. What well, do how can yeah. we be more clear on this? Just, do you want crackers? I'll give you crackers. Are you in it for the crackers? <laughs> and in demon baby news, televangelist Christian and melting bobblehead of Jimmy Carter, Pat Robertson was asked on his program, The 700 Club, this week whether babies could be possessed. And his answer was not no. It was not no. <laughs> his answer was, well, it started with, ow, I'm being attacked in the face by a giant lemon. Why is this always happening to me? This is what I always look like. Also, yes, demon babies are real. That yeah. was his answer, basically. Jesus, wait. sorry, Pat, I had to ask. He's vomiting all the time, babbles incoherently, tries to eat things off the floor. Classic demonic possession, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Checks all the boxes. So here's the story. Viewer Lisa called into the show and asked, quote, my question is regarding demonic possession. Already know. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Skip. <laughs> Can babies be possessed? Oh, God, no. And if so, oh, there's a fucking follow up. No, just no. Yeah, yes, there is. <laughs> gonna stop if you. So, the else is not important. <laughs> Does the age of accountability come into play for salvation? Fucking what? <laughs> End of real question. If my, if an eight year old is a literal demon, that's his fault, right? <laughs> asking for a demon friend, <laughs> yeah. not mine. Are you sure you're not trying to reach the Catholic Church, lady? Because. <laughs> But Robertson's answer is somehow crazier than the question. He responded, quote, I just believe if that child is born to a family of devil worshipers, there's a real possibility that the devil will think that he has a claim over oh, that oh, child. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's horrible to contemplate, but I don't think that they're protected in some fashion from what's, I mean, a generational curse, end quote. Wow. So fucking stupid. Okay, but here's the real question. What if the demon is under the age of accountability? Like, stop wasting Pat Robertson's time and ask the important question, the hard questions. Yeah. So a couple things to point out about this. First of all, and I think we all already know this, it's homicidally dangerous. Yeah. Right? People don't ask if a baby is possessed because they're going to refuse its invitation to brunch. They ask because they're going to attempt to exercise that baby and Believe me when I say we see a lot of stories about babies who die that way. Yeah. We just don't report on them. Yeah, because it would be really fucking depressing. Look, look, th this caller has a particular baby in mind. Yep. Right? Like any any answer short of reporting that person to the FBI is homicidally dangerous. Even absolutely not fall short. Yeah. Right. Negligent. Secondly, the reason that people think that children are possessed 
overwhelmingly is because of medical or developmental problems. Yes. And now, thanks to Pat Robertson, even if this lady doesn't have an exorcism plant, she does, there is one less person in this baby's life who's going to get it the help it's need. And dang, doesn't it just tell you everything you need to know about Pat Robertson when you find yourself saying, oh God, I hope this advice gets ignored. I hope this yeah. advice gets ignored. No shit. God, I'd say he should go fuck himself. But that's an insult to fucking oneself. And for more on that subject, I want to take a break from our first sponsor this week, Adam and Eve. <laughs> hey, podcast listener. Are you into butt stuff? E Eli, Eli, what did we say about asking listeners about their sex lives? Yeah, thank you. We had a whole meeting. It was no, long. No, I know that. I'm telling them about this week's sponsor, adamandeve.com. There was a slideshow and everything was wait, very wait, clear. Wait, what's adamandeve.com? Really? Well, they're the number one adult toy superstore. Originally started as a master's thesis in family planning, they were the first mail-order contraceptive business in America. But now they sell sex toys for whatever you're into. Butt stuff, outfit stuff, tying each other up stuff. They've got it all. Ooh, tying each other up stuff. That sounds the lady great. The from the state came. She the did. Whole That's thing. true. And right now, you can select almost any one item for 50% off when you enter offer code SCATHING at checkout. And then... Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. Wait, what, what kind of free stuff? A cock ring, a vibrator, and a lube sample. Plus, six free spicy movies. Spicy. Oh, you mean porn? I sure do. Nice. Plus, free shipping. Wow, that does sound good. Wait, sorry, what's the offer code again? That's scathing. S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G. Offer code scathing at checkout at adamandeve.com. So no matter what you're into, head over to adamandeve.com and get yourself some sex stuff today. AdamandEve.com, because when there is no God, you can literally do whatever you want to to your own butt. Uh, I don't think that's their catchphrase. Well, it should be. Okay. It really should be. <laughs> and in indentured monkey surf news, <laughs> creation type man, <laughs> live action nest from Earthbound, Matt Powell. Wow. Oh, that's so Oh, my God. Video last week. Yeah. He, he, tell me he doesn't no, have a yo yo at all times. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. <laughs> There's no way he doesn't have a yo-yo at all times. It's fantastic. That's one of those perma names that we just have to stick with. We're not topping that. Yeah. So he made another video last week because that is his job. We are mm -hmm. his boss. Yep. And yep. making ignorant videos about evolution is the entire job description. And we're such generous employers that we let him keep all the money he makes from Google AdSense when his YouTube videos get literally dozens of views. Scores <laughs> even. Yeah. This one is up to 1,500 or so, actually. So he's really getting close to buying that race car bunk bed on his wish list <laughs> <laughs> to replace his non-race yeah, car bunk bed that he has as an table. adult. So the latest installment, it's all about how dinosaurs farted themselves into extinction. Wow, Matt, you're so close to convincing me to give up my atheism with this argument. If only there were some kind of video of someone withstanding an enormous amount of fart in an enclosed space to prove how fatal it is and why <laughs> I'd probably love Jesus right then and there. <laughs> so here's how we get there. In 2012, there was a paper in the journal called Current Biology, and it explained how farting and burping by dinosaurs was a source of greenhouse gas, yeah. which might explain some amount of the rise in atmospheric temperature at the time. Interesting. To be clear, the time isn't like that day. Right. The, <laughs> right. the time <laughs> is about 130 million years during which titanic sauropods were alive. And the paper mentioned absolutely nothing about extinction. It just said, maybe a bit warmer. That's it. Mm -hmm. But the climate alarmists at Fox News got a hold of the story <laughs> and wrote headlines like, Dinosaurs gassed themselves into extinction. Ugh. And then, nine years later, Matt Powell found one of those headlines, and he really, really wanted that new race car bed, <laughs> so he made a video. <laughs> okay, okay. Nobody tell him that you can't actually drive the race car bunk beds. I want him to find out the hard way, okay? <laughs> Okay, I do kind of wish that was how farting worked, though, because I eat a very fibrous diet and I could save a ton on my heating bill. I could really... <laughs> that is how farting works. So here's the commentary from Matt Powell. He starts by explaining the headline he saw at Fox News, and he can barely get through a sentence because he has to say fart and gas out loud, and he's a child. Mm -hmm. He almost breaks <laughs> down giggling multiple times. And then he finally tells us, quote, 
evolution actually teaches that certain dinosaurs farted themselves into extinction. In schools across America, kids are learning this in colleges and universities. Yep, those are schools. Those are the names yep. of schools. Yep. <laughs> and they're being taught this theory every single day. No. <laughs> Side note, you're probably wondering... How does the Holocaust tie in? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> he continues, Hitler said, if you tell a lie big enough, loud enough, and often enough, people will believe it. And people laugh at you for not believing in evolution. And they mock you and say that you're too superstitious to believe in the facts. But they're the superstitious ones. <laughs> they are. Because anybody who believes that dinosaurs farted themselves into non-existence is putting trust in primitive superstition, end quote. Yeah, no, I will admit, man, those those fucking biology classes at Fox News University are pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just that's a good reminder. Fox News was his source for science mm -hmm. on this. Yep. So just to review, here's the string of events. Sum it up for us. Yeah. Biology paper. Greenhouse gas can warm stuff. Nobody. Dinosaur farting apocalypse. <laughs> Fox News. Dinosaur farting apocalypse. <laughs> Matt Powell, nine years later. Dinosaur farting apocalypse. Evolution is a hoax. I want to race car bunk bed really bad. <laughs> and in devil in the details news, you know, one of the questions we get quite a bit here at The Scathing Atheist is, what is your response to ex-creationist argument? Or how would you reply to why apologetic? And while the answer to both those questions is actually a tense dependent combination of fuck and you <laughs> this week we got in a reminder that even that is working too hard because the other side is coming at us with stuff like dinosaurs are the devil <laughs> yep that's right according to the bible satan the prince of darkness farted himself into extinction <laughs> yes he did that's real yeah, so this week's nugget comes to us from show favorite Pastor Gene Kim. Is he a show favorite? Oh, I, do you not love Gene Kim with your no, whole heart I do and soul? now. Yeah, just, yeah, it wasn't yeah. established yet for me. <laughs> well, regular listeners might know why we love him for his theory that the earth is hollow and filled with hell <laughs> like a cream egg. Uh, uh, okay, that is not fair to hell, Eli. Pastor Kim <laughs> thinks that earth is filled with fire and eternal torture, and that is significantly more pleasant than the diabetic bunny sperm that they put in cream eggs. <laughs> yep, withdrawn. Withdrawn. Yeah. withdrawn. And it can't yep. be hollow if it's filled with the fire and the cream. <laughs> That's <Excuse me>. right. <laughs> yeah. So I highly recommend watching Pastor Kim's entire video because, one, it's only nine minutes and, two, it is a delight. Yeah. It's pretty great. <laughs> but so stupid. the argument basically breaks down to when the Bible talks about Leviathan and Behemoth, it's not talking about how dinosaurs and men live together. That's ridiculous. It's talking about Satan. Because every time Leviathan and Behemoth are mentioned, the Bible also says that God is going to kill it with a sword. And who is God going to kill with a sword? I don't know. That's right. Satan. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. First of all, the Leviathan in the Bible was a kraken, literally a kraken, mm -hmm. and it represents all the heathens of the world besides the Jewish people or the Christian people. So the Bible is saying that God's going to carry out a genocide with a giant robot like Pacific Rim. Yep. That's in the Bible. That's yep. the story. You're not talking me down from that. I know what happened. <laughs> also, the behemoth is a hippo. It is a hippo. <laughs> it's a hippo. So according to Pastor Kim... Satan, again, Satan, the prince of darkness, who wants to corrupt all the people on earth, turned himself into a hippo on the River Jordan and just sat there being like, nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, a hippo. Oh, but, okay, but the, actually, the more you know about hippos, the more sense that makes it. Like, if Satan was going to come <laughs> as a mammal. Yeah. Give me the body of Eli Bosnick, and now <laughs> we wait. <laughs> so... Again, I cannot recommend watching this video enough. Pastor Kim delivers a sermon to himself at a whiteboard, like a like a French <laughs> duchess being surprised by the fillings of a box of chocolate. He's delighted. <laughs> he's, he's drawing lines between the word dinosaur and Satan yes. at multiple angles. <laughs> it's just fun to watch him have fun. Yeah, right. There's a bunch of edits of him drawing lines. Yes, right, so right, he, exactly. Like, didn't so, get uh, it right. He was like, oh, cut, damn it, cut. I tried to no. draw a line and hurt myself again. That was a rhombus. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally tonight, and evangelicals have tiny little wieners news. 
According this to it, possible. <laughs> that's I, you right made on the this nose. Story up. <laughs> that's the headline. Nope, you that's guys both somehow passed this one up. According <sighs> to a paper published in the Journal of the Scientific Study of Religion, there is a strong correlation between the number of evangelicals in your state and the number of people Googling derivatives of how do I make my penis bigger. <laughs> is a real fact in the universe. That's science is a yep. journal of scientific science study. Knowledge. Okay, researchers Samuel L. Perry and Andrew L. White, thank you guys, teased the data out of Google Trends by comparing the number of evangelicals per thousand in each state with the popularity of search terms like male enhancement, male enhancement pills, and penis pump. Because Amazing. apparently... They somehow got the impression that we were running out of material for the show. <laughs> also, it's probably more than we think that correlation. I'm guessing the study didn't look for every search. Like it didn't look for big penis prayer and <laughs> intercessory yeah, big right, dick right. and incel support oh, yeah. group, stuff like that. They didn't check everything. Now, you're probably tempted, as I was, to write this off as a byproduct of education. Right. Like the less educated you are, the more likely you are to both be Christian and to think that some herbal supplement can grow your dick because giving Christians the benefit of the doubt and pointing out how much dumber they are than us is often the same thing. But green tea really does do that. But, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but this research takes that into account. I, like e Even when you account for education, political preference, marital status and race, the numbers still hold. Okay, but the cross-religious penis pump focus group is a weird room, right? That's a weird vibe. <laughs> Rabbi, pastor. So, <laughs> now, of course, there's no indication that Christians with dicks actually have smaller dicks than dick-wielding atheists. So what do these data show? Well, the suggestion of the researchers themselves is that it's a result of the toxic masculinity inherent in the evangelical culture. Solid theory. Right. Yep. When, when a man is defined by his manliness and any deviation from traditionally masculine roles is seen as a personal flaw, it stands to reason that more and more people would be inclined to define themselves by the size of their dick. In the researcher's own words, quote, a higher prevalence of search for male enhancement terms mean men in that region not only feel that having a larger penis is important, but that their penis does not measure up. This is perhaps the very archetype of masculine insecurity, end quote. Yeah, so moral of the story should be on Google Maps looking for clitoris near me. <laughs> now, obviously, there are weaknesses to this study. As the researchers point out, we don't know if men or women are the ones Googling this shit. We can only account for cross correlations to a limited degree. We can't parse the data any further than the state level. But it's not hard to imagine that the increasing focus of evangelicals on traditional patriarchal values is leaving more and more of them feeling physically inadequate. And when the most generous possible interpretation is... It's not that your dick is smaller than mine. It's that you think your dick is smaller than mine. It's still pretty good <laughs> ammunition for atheists. That makes me happy. Yeah, right? And with a smile on your face, I guess we can close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, we'll be that much closer to the outro music. All right, so if I make this shot, the score is tied 32-32, and we go into the tiebreaker round. Triple elimination. Triple exactly. elim. Hey, guys, have you seen the... Wait, wait, what are you doing in here? Oh, hey, Noah, I, I got to send out this package, but I didn't want the hassle of going to the post office. So Heath and I are having an octagonal series of events to decide and who has to go. score is tied. Oh, Face. come on. Guy guys, if you want to skip the hassle of the post office, why not just use stamps.com? What's what's stamps? Stamps. Seriously? Com. Seriously? You were fixing the scoreboard. I, I would uh, I'd still stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. Stamps.com is a must have for any business, whether you're a small office sending out invoices an online seller shipping out orders or even a giant warehouse sending out thousands of packages a day. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24 seven for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send it. Once your mail's ready, just schedule it to pick up and drop off. It's that simple. Wow, that does sound easy. But Eli and I spent a lot of money on these lawn darts. And wow. flaming hula hoops. And the hoops, yep. Well, with stamps.com, you get discounts of up to 40% off post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Not to mention stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. All right, Noah, I am sold. So how do I give stamps.com a try? 
Well, stop wasting time going to the post office and go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk, and with our promo code SCATHING, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in SCATHING. That's Stamps.com, promo code SCATHING. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. So uh, what's the tiebreaker of it? Sockenbopper's Kumite. I see. Gonna fill mine with rocks. No. One of our saving graces here at Skating Atheists is that people can only get so pissed about charity work, which is why our wonderful listeners have been willing to wait for two goddamn years as we steadily chip away at our 2019 <laughs> vulgarity for charity insults. So you're in a third. Well, you're in a third. Yeah, so, well, so we're in the second year. But yeah, at least some of you need wait no longer since we got several more to knock out tonight. First one is for you, Eli. Jonathan would like you to roast Irish politician Danny Healy Ray. Oh, how we are recording this on St. Patrick's Day, and how fitting. Someone has brought my Yoichi Toy to toy voice to life as a practical <laughs> joke. That's you. Uh, that and had that. it defend, let me check here, uh, drinking and driving on the national stage. Yes, uh, Danny Healy Ray defended drinking and driving. In his role as a politician, this man is the avatar of interrupting a good time with your friends at the dive bar in Heath and I's hometown so that he can struggle through. May the road rise up to meet you <laughs> in the <laughs> desperate hope that you'll invite him to sit down. But you won't because he smells like urine and his pockets are full of bar peanuts. <laughs> I mean, I like the peanuts part. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One for you here, Noah. Aaron like would like a roast of Al Jackson. Yeah, look, I, at first I thought this would be hard because the opening line of the description is, well, this is this guy that started such and such a homeless shelter, but it went downhill so goddamn quick. <laughs> he's, he's a super Christian asshole who uses his charity to proselytize to a captive audience. He tells his employees to pray about it when they sh say shit like, you know, is this OSHA compliant? He starts every <laughs> speech by thanking his personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, and in case I liked him too much, he uses words like "onlyest." What? Yeah, and for that, fuck you. Yeah, and for that last one alone, I hope your obituary ends with the words "from the inside out." <laughs> <laughs> and Heath, Jacob would like you to roast the girl who went viral for rapping about being a MAGA kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, I tried to follow the link that Jacob sent, but the video got taken down presumably for failing to meet YouTube's talent requirement. A very <laughs> high bar. But I looked up MAGA kid rapper. I found a bunch of other ones and I learned two things. First of all, Republicans are breeding without a license and yeah. it's crazy. We it's spiraling out of control. We need to stop that. Also, I learned that the Geneva Conventions apparently don't apply to kids. There's like an age thing. <laughs> because those are rhymes against humanity. Oh, it's wow. the worst <laughs> thing I've ever ever seen they hurt themselves on rhythm it's so bad oh it's like it's like fucking trying to read these dr seussian poems that conservatives keep putting up in defense of <laughs> racist pictures yeah what's your meter there a through z it's just, <laughs> you can't just keep that's nothing that's not there's no meter if you do that that's just letters they're all different all right noah you're up next spencer would like you to roast their friend landon yeah, God, Landon looks like a Chili's waiter who's being way too aggressive about upselling the appetizer. And according to Spencer, <laughs> Landon is neither religious nor atheist. Nope. Which makes him either a plasma or a gas, I think. And, and his girlfriend looks like she's never met a board game night that she didn't make sexually awkward. Okay. <laughs> Another one for you, Heath. Florian would like a roast of German politician Marcus Soder, the president of Bavaria. <laughs> okay. At first, I genuinely thought Florian was joking and sent us a Bond villain. Yes! And was like, no, nah, nah, dude, roast this guy. He's, he's a real person. He's a German politician. No, he is, though. And we got a photo of Soder holding a cross. And he's very clearly figuring out something with a slow moving laser and a crucifix. There's yes, no yes. chance that's not what he's doing in that moment. Mm -hmm. So Marcus Soder, bring it in. Uh, obviously you didn't get the memo about this. If you have an umlaut in your name, you're not allowed to ask for a space program that has your face in the logo. <laughs> you're not for Bavaria. <laughs> yeah. Which is literally what you did. He wanted the Bavarian space squad. 
<laughs> Bavarian SS. And <laughs> now we have to send a British guy with herpes to murder you. Yep. Yep. There's no other choice. No choice. Kind of the way it would look. Like, he's the exact kind of person that you expect when you find out he's the president of a political party that has its religion in the name. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And Eli, James would like you to roast players who ruin D&D by trying to win it and having their characters act like murder hobos. <laughs> ah, <laughs> D&D murder hobos, because who doesn't want to get together with their three or four most socially awkward friends and have phone sex in front of everybody? <laughs> <laughs> These players are the kind that find it highly unlikely that a town would have guards and a police force while... They're trying to murder a shopkeep for weapons they can't use and gold they can't spend because it's imaginary. <laughs> and in doing so, they manage the impossible. They manage to lose Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. not just for them, <laughs> but for the Dungeons and Dragons themselves. <laughs> All right, Heath, I got another one for you. Frank wants you to insult dog cancer. <laughs> Great. This is fun. This is fun. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Yeah, so dog cancer, I mean, it does win every argument about religion in two words. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's great. Yep. Still not worth it, though. Lots of people use baby cancer instead of dog cancer in those arguments, but so many babies are shitty, and nobody wants to admit it. Just They're bad babies, but dog cancer wins every time. William Lane Craig's entire career should be giant, long speeches followed by, yeah, but dog cancer again. <laughs> hey, dog cancer, I win. The only thing funny about dog cancer is jingly chemo. Oh, but, Jesus but you, you really have to nail the timing of that. Pun. Yeah, you yeah, got to get into it. You do. Like right now. You got it. Like just now. Yeah, you know that. All right, Eli, I got a tricky one for you as well. Alex would like a roast of his twin brother, Alan. Yeah, I love this. This is actually the result of a roast off. So Alan gave money for us to insult Alex and Alex is paying back in kind. So that's good stuff. And that's especially appropriate because Alan looks like little orphan Annie's face is a meth poster. <laughs> so does Alex. Apparently. <laughs> he looks like the last pirate to believe big lemon and not die of scurvy. <laughs> <laughs> he has in this picture his arm around the naked torso of the drummer from King Buffalo and the drummer from King Buffalo looks terrified to say anything wrong about Carrot Top's oeuvre of work. <laughs> <laughs> there are proof of life photos with less terror in the eyes of the subjects. <laughs> All right, Noah, let me return the favor here. Brian would like a roast of his CEO, Tim. All right, so first of all, this motherfucker looks like the Mormon the other Mormons have to ditch before they can say darn it and hold their thumbs over the bikinis <laughs> and beach photos, okay? But, but he's a Baptist, and we know that because despite the fact that the hospital he's in charge of is ostensibly secular, they still read explicitly Christian prayers of the goddamn intercom and respond to atheist complaints by reading the Christian apologetics bullshit flow chart. <laughs> Dog cancer. <laughs> right. I should probably talk about that. But when you just look like the Agent Smith they'd have inserted into the Matrix if it was an accounting program, I kind of have to focus on that. <laughs> all right. So now that we're all good and limber, it's time for another Spightning round. The category here is friends, and I think we can all agree that nothing brings friends closer like the deep, dark secrets they hide together. So for this spightening round, I want you to tell me what your roastie is hiding. We're going to start with you, Eli. George would like to know what Tetchy Bugger is hiding. Oh, I love Tetchy Bugger, but it is obvious from the hat that he is wearing in this picture that he is hiding a collection of philosophy books with furry porn inside them. <laughs> I know a fellow fluff when I see one, Tetchy. You're not fooling anybody. I've never seen the face of a man more disappointed not to have a tail at any given moment. <laughs> you look like the Uber driver who eventually has to give Danny Haley Ray a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Heath, what is Eric's buddy Steve hiding? Well, he looks like Josh Forstein's Funko Pop. <laughs> so definitely not hiding that. No, that's clear. Uh, that's right. right up front. And that includes the backwards fitted baseball cap that's about to burst into fucking flames from the force <laughs> of compressing his upper head into that tiny space. So I guess he is hiding a, a Charles Law experiment, first of all, <laughs> and a forehead that looks like my inner thighs after running for a train in London. Just <laughs> raw. <laughs> Okay, Noah, one for you here. What is Paul's friend Raphael hiding? An unrequited sexual attraction to Paul. Okay, <laughs> this is friend in the 
loose as possible sense of the term, but literally everything in Paul's message was consistent with Catholic friend who isn't allowed to want to fuck a dude being mad at you for being a dude he wants to fuck. And he's Catholic <laughs> also, so he's probably hiding child rapists too, just like just yeah. dem demographically. Stop that. Generally, yeah. All right, so let's keep digging. Heath, tell us what Michael's friend Dave is hiding. <laughs> okay, so we got a picture of Dave at a barbecue. This is my favorite picture we've ever gotten. He's so very clearly hiding the fact that he really has to shit. He's oh. holding it in. But he started holding a little bit too late, and now he cannot move for the rest <laughs> of that barbecue. That is what I'm looking at, 100%. I call that move the Bosnick, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Noah, I got one for you here. Tell us what David's friend Kyle is hiding. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure what he's hiding, but from the look of the face on this picture, I can tell you where he's hiding it. <laughs> Incidentally, it's the same place where he gets all this information about nutrition. <laughs> Eli, let's have you close out the spiking round with a roast for whatever Cullen's friend Nick is hiding. Oh, uh, yes, Nick. Nick is hiding the boat he built while he was drunk at the bottom of the first body of water he tries to float it on. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Nick, buddy, he, he sent me a picture. It's a box. I know. I know. You painted it gray. But baby Moses and Ken Ham are giving that shit the side <laughs> eye, buddy. Do not try to float it. Do not. Leave it on your lawn. All right. Excellent spiting round, although that warning may have come a little too late. This next one is for me. Mark would like a roast of Mormon leader Russell M. Nelson. And I'm pretty sure I've insulted this motherfucker before. But when you make your living presiding over a literal gilded lie that uses its ill-begotten power to dehumanize LGBTQ people and drive young men to suicide for masturbating, I'm OK double dipping. <laughs> so Russell M. Nelson, president of the Church of the Latter Mormon of Mormon Mormon Mormons, <laughs> you look like Mr. Smithers fuck the naked mole rat. <laughs> All right. Eli, Jim would like you to roast Pennsylvania State Representative Frank Ferry. Yeah, Frank. Oh, you managed to be an almost good politician for Pennsylvania, which is fitting <laughs> because he has the not quite Philadelphia standard of faces. He looks like the face on a knockoff brand of hair dye. Right? Like if, <laughs> if there were a used car salesman salesman, he would look like Frank Ferry. All right. Excellent. And uh, Heath, April wants a good roasting for her ex-boyfriend, Gerald. Okay, so imagine the headline, Michigan cocaine dealer arrested outside of underage dance club. <laughs> you are picturing Gerald. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Gerald. And you're picturing a real headline about Gerald. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We did it. Uh, all right, Eli, Mark, I'm, this one's going to upset me. Mark would like you to roast ASMR. Thank you, Mark, for this chance at last to address the weird fuck stuff that somehow made it into the world for all of us to see. I don't know how you perverts managed it, but you need to take your sexual shame and put it back in private immediately. There are YouTube channels just openly tickling the ears and spines of weirdos everywhere without shame. What? How did this happen? We didn't, as a society, just decide crushing porn was kid-friendly or start casually talking about our latex fetish, you deviants, you destroyers of society. You could just pull up to any coffee shop you find filled with God-fearing Americans, filled with children, and get your disgusting oral rocks off for all to see. You should be tarred and feathered, driven before us with rocks and sticks. Also, I don't get it, and I'm jealous. I don't understand it. Right. <laughs> it should be. Dig it. It's supposed to be nice. Yeah, it, is. it is. All right, Noah. <laughs> got one for you here. Eli's a bigot. One more time. Just want to mm -hmm. repeat that. Mm -hmm. Julie would like a roast of her dogs or of herself. Okay, but before I get to that, you know what they used to call ASMR? They used to call it a brain-gasm, Eli. That's how good it feels. <laughs> they did? Brain-gasm. Yeah. Whatever. I, you guys can't. So, anyway, so Julie wants a roast... <laughs> Of her dogs or herself. And normally this would be a no-brainer, right? I'd, I'd, I'd roast Julie. But Julie is a middle-aged retro gaming animal lover from Michigan. Loves 80s movies, sci-fi, and comic books. And I'm not ready to look that deep into the fucking mirror. So, <laughs> fuck Sonny and Delilah. Delilah <laughs> is a Datsun Chihuahua mix, which is the fucking black jelly bean of dogs to begin with. And when Julie was describing Sonny's attributes, she puts love to roll around in turkey shit and dead fish right next to loves to cuddle. So... He's dusting off the obscure tabs on Pornhub, apparently. 
There's an ASMR for that, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Speaking of dusting off the obscure tabs on Pornhub, this next one's for you, Heath. Stephen would like you to roast German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Okay, so, yeah, Stephen asked for a roast about Merkel's immigration policy. Mm. And considering the fact that Germany has more refugees than any other country in Europe, kind of wondering if Stephen wants his face on the logo for the Bavarian Space <laughs> <laughs> Germany actually has more political refugees than any other country in the world. That's majority white people. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the highest bar, but still, it's something. All that being said, back in 2010... Merkel basically said that immigrants need to become more Aryan, yeah. more Ooh. Christian. Really said something like that, which doesn't play well when you look like you're guarding the bridge to Germany with your Nazi riddles three. Maybe I'll <laughs> look for a different stance. <laughs> Better you than me, Heath. Better you than me. I think she has looked for a different stance more recently. No, yeah. Yeah, uh, fucking horse stance, maybe. <laughs> It's real she'll, hard for Americans to look down on Angela Merkel. Is yeah, what we're right. saying. Because she'll hip throw us. Well, that's that. All right. I got another one for you. Noah, Anthony would like you to roast his buddy's ex, Emily. Okay. Her face looks like the fucking Mercator projection. <laughs> it's, it's, it like really a, does. it's like a three dimensional face. Mention. Being just like represented on a two dimensional plane while trying to maintain all the proper distances and shit. Oh, it's just and also she has to, she has the ability to accidentally cheat on her husband, which I get. You know, the other day I meant to pick up double A batteries and I accidentally fucked the lady. It's it's like it's like, like that. It's like that. I get it. I get it. Okay, uh, Heath Mickey would like a roast of their uncle Mark. Yeah. Okay. So according to Mickey. Despite attending a university in, quote, Fuckville, Texas, Uncle Mark is still the shittiest person Mickey's ever met. <laughs> now, granted, Fuckville sounds way better than most of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like an interesting plan. Oh, we never saw that. We like to fuck. That's what we called. <laughs> sounds interesting. But, yeah. uh, you know, still not great. <laughs> not great. And Uncle Mark is an anti-choice Catholic deacon who is skeptical about the Me Too movement because, quote, Women are all telling the same story. What? Yeah. But that story is sexual assault, yeah. which, you know, tends to have some recurring themes. But it's confusing, Uncle Mark. I get it. You know, what are the odds? All these robberies involve theft. It's like, <laughs> what are the fucking odds? And also, I get it. You know, it's hard to form thoughts when you're constantly worrying about achieving the perfect visual sweet spot between Jeff Foxworthy and Luigi from Nintendo. <laughs> that, that's a lot to think about. You're constantly it. calibrating. Yeah. It's hard. You've got to hit it right in the middle and you, you look go. beautiful. I'm <laughs> a smarter than a third grader. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Eli, Alex would like you to roast leg of lamb. Yeah. Now, I, first I was like, that's a weird roast, but it is a weird dish if you think about it for a second, right? First of all, Unless your dinner entertainment is a jester, you probably live in a time and place too modern to be eating that dish. But more importantly, it's a weird fucking name, right? Meat eating aside, let's get some of your weird carnivore code going on here, right? People? Yeah, right. <laughs> Steak, chops, something. Leg of land. Care for arm of bunny. How about <laughs> smile of puppy? This comes with <laughs> potato dicks and cucumber dreams. <laughs> I don't think right. you're having the effect on me that you were intending. To yeah, the thing, <laughs> smile of puppy sounds delicious. All right, so let's let's close things up with some roast for our heavy hitters. These folks chipped in the big bucks, and damn it, if that doesn't make them special. Let's start with Michael's boss, Nick. Oh, we got a shot of Nick at the bar here, and he is <laughs> without question about to snap in the bartender's face or yes, hold up a five dollar <laughs> bill to try to get his yeah. attention. Yes, he absolutely is. Probably <laughs> both of those things at the same time. And uh, I'm taking that $5 bill and walking back to the kitchen right away. That's what's happening if I'm bartending. <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. Leg day. Cool. Cool. It is leg day for you. I'll definitely be right back. I'm totally coming right back <laughs> to help you with your uh, fucking Jaeger bombs. Yeah. He looks like if Cuts Clothing's ad copy was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so next up, we need a roast for Derek's friend, Brad. Oh, okay. So what's worst about Derek is that he's a Patreon donation moocher yeah that's right brad we heard about you trying to mooch off derek's commercial free extended version of the show you are stealing food out of my baby's mouth brad stealing it why don't you just come over to my house and punch my baby in the face while you're at it you unrepentant murderer escalating also 
you look like the Keebler elf dropped out of the band like Randy Best. I just want to throw that <laughs> out there. Wait, Pete Best? The Beatles guy? Yeah, Pete Best, not Randy Best. Who's Randy Best? <laughs> Nobody. All right. Yeah, he looks like the kind of guy, too, that you want to clarify the why don't you punch my baby thing was rhetorical with, right? <laughs> also, but but great beard, by the way, dude. I totally did not <laughs> notice your receding hairline. It's doing its job. Yeah. I didn't even notice, Brett. All right, here's here's an easy one. Dan would like us to roast the Pennsylvania State Legislature. Okay, uh, but before we do the roast, I'd like to start with an invocation, if you guys don't mind. Mm. But oh, you know what? Actually, that's illegal in Pennsylvania yeah. because I believe in less than one God, oh. and they spent like one point two million dollars trying to make that <laughs> officially a law. So I guess we could just go ahead and talk about fixing roads with damage from metal square carriage wheels in Lancaster County. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hopefully you'll have plenty of money after you spent that $1.2 million preventing me from doing an invocation. God, why is it that everything that follows Pennsylvania State Legislature in the headlines sounds like an item from an unenthusiastic Legion of Doom brainstorming session? <laughs> right? It's like where it's like you're where all the bad guys from boring political thrillers go to die. <laughs> Tom Clancy's trash can, the political body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but I will say this about the Pennsylvania State Legislature. It is perhaps compensated by their coat of arms, which is <laughs> literally an old-timey plow, a boat, some wheat, and two horses who look fucking horrified that this is yes. their coat of arms. <laughs> they look like they just got their coat of arms back from Fiverr, and these horses are not happy. They're like, we need a <laughs> refund right now. All right, so next up, Nicholas wants a roast of his two daughters. Uh, see, now this, this one is a challenge because Nicholas's daughters are adorable, perfect-looking, blonde-headed Norwegians, except they are very clearly about to throw whoever is taking this picture off the cliffside yes. the photo is yep. being taken at. <laughs> yep. So they're murderers. My roast for these children is that they're murderers who murder. <laughs> and Nicholas, just in case you were their victim and you're in heaven now listening to this podcast... You are gone, but not forgotten, Nicholas. Yeah. You are gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> yeah, no, they're almost too cute to roast, but just almost. Yeah, they, they're like the, the ones that would interrupt your tricycle ride if a Walt Disney resort was haunted, <laughs> right? <laughs> they, they also look like they're the for their first fucking words where I'm going to need a higher SPF than that, too. So look <laughs> out. Also, let's just be realistic. They look like they're bad at stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're not talented in any way. Everything on the fridge is a pity magnet. Let's like just be honest. That's what's happening. I know everybody thinks their kids are good at stuff. These kids are not. No, they're not. They're going to be normies. They're already normie kids. They're going to tell you about their nice little Saturday at Ikea. Their favorite book's going to be TikTok. You should get used to this idea now. Your kids are meh. <laughs> just like most people's kids. All right, so we've got a, a special roast here for Rob. Rob would like you to roast his former coworker, David. Okay, the picture Rob sent us looks like whatever alien is inside David's human suit first did, attempted a smile when they took this photo. Mm -hmm. he, he looks like the company insisted on taking his ID picture as he lowered himself onto a pair of anguish. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently David was the manager of a team that does IT support for a 911 service. Yeah. And he would, quote, frequently interrupt people on calls to try out new jokes, <laughs> which is objectively hilarious, at least until it was murder. Well, then yep, it hopefully it was never yeah. murder, but that's hilarious. Regardless, fun fact about David, when he's lowering himself onto a pair of anguish, he often checks to see if he needs to floss at that very moment <laughs> also. And he has someone take a picture while all that's happening. It's yep, so that's what we're looking at. fucking awkward. He looks like he's learning to smile from an instruction book that was poorly translated out of Mandarin. <laughs> right? And last but certainly not least, our number one donor from last year. Technically two years ago. <laughs> yeah, okay, yes, technically two years ago. Anyway, Kirk donated $1,500 for a song about Eli's sworn enemy, the Gilmore Girls. Hell yeah. <laughs> and when our show calls for a song, there's only one thing to do. Hit it, Anna. Rory and Lorelai sitting at the Dragonfly Inn. Drink 13 cups of coffee each. Eight portions of food and still are thin. Because even though this show is cool for being about a single mom, its messages to young women everywhere are really fucking wrong. La, 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 la. 
So let's start with our leading ladies who like to duck in witty little quips that often fat shame talk down to other cultures or are broadly homophobic, ignoring their white privilege when everything seems to fall in Rory's lap. The only tension comes from the bad boy versus rich boy trope crap. La 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 la. La la la. Yes, the Gilmore girls are sexist. Think women are expected to be sexually experienced virgins. Pretty witty pure. And by the way, the only gay guy is a bitchy slut shaming classist who never gets to come out on the show. No, 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 it's such a shitty show. Whoa, whoa, Gilmore girls. She's a comic genius, but the jokes she gets to make are that she's clumsy and obese, yes, and she's constantly berated for being single until she finally catches a dick and then it shifts to, when are you and this dude gonna have a kid? La, 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 yes, the Gilmore girl, the sexist, think women are to be sexually experienced virgins pretty witty pure and by the way the only gay guy is a bitchy slut shaming classist who never gets to come out on the show no 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 it's such a shitty show ooh oh oh Gilmore Girls is a shitty show anyway let's talk about Lane now the badass outspoken Korean best friend Escapes her religious parents and plays drums in a rock and roll band. Has sex one time, gets pregnant with twins, marries a douche who expects her to apologize for not being a fucking mind reader and not being able to intuit when he wants to have sex, even though she literally mentioned several times on the show that she doesn't like sex, like it wasn't good for her, and then fucking apologizes for that later. And the fact that she has kids makes her bring back her emotionally abusive mom back into her life, and then she doesn't get to be a rock star like she's literally always wanted to be in the show. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <sighs> la 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 Yes, Gilmore Girls is toxic Abortion's not an option And neither is adoption And no matter what your shitty parents did You should forgive them Especially if they're rich And you have a kid who needs an education So you should probably just let them completely control your life And maybe you're Fuck The Gilmore Girls is sexist Think women are Expected to be sexually experienced virgins, pretty witty pure, and by the way, the only gay guy is a bitchy slut shaming classist who never gets to come out on the show. No, 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 it's just a shitty show. Whoa, whoa, Gilmore Girls is a shitty show. the la 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 thing i don't get it i don't get it i just don't get it thank you anna amazing job as always we don't deserve you and we never will and the fucking gilmore girls definitely don't deserve you anyway that's all the bless me we've got for you tonight we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more if you can't wait that long be able to look out for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend god off and boost debuting at 7 a.m eastern on tuesday and an even new episode of our half sister show citation needed debuting at noon eastern on wednesday obviously this show would be like one shoe dropping if i neglected to thank heath enright for using commas and capital letters i need to thank eli bostic for something other than that i need to thank the lovely and talented lucinda illusions who will be back soon she was off getting halfway to vaccinated this week that lucky fucker i also need to thank also lovely and also talented anna bosnick for singing that song even though as i understand it she fucking loves the gilmore girls also want to thank sean from speed cube review for providing this week's far as worth quote incidentally if you are into solving rubik's cubes or you want to learn how check the show notes for links to his site but most of all of course i want to thank this week's best bipeds paul justin janelle neo titron Teresa, r roberts listening to you is what's keeping me sane. thanks john marwin ask keith of steph's sister point counts as incest amy heather Kalib, sue and sarah 
Paul, Justin, Janelle, Neo, Titron, and Teresa, who are so sexy, the MPA had to come up with something that goes after NC-17. Our listening John Marwin and stepsister porn, who are so bright you can see them on the horizon in those tack light commercials. And Amy, Heather, Kaleeb, Sue, and Sarah, who are so sweet, diabetics aren't allowed to kiss them. Together, these 15 fabulously fuckable philanthropists forked over a friendly fraction of fungibility to the furtherance of free thought this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the money it takes to give us money, but if you do, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheists, whereby you own early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheists.com. And if you'd like to help, but you aren't stimulated enough, you can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, or following at PIATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast provide up in the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson handles on social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheists.com. We're not going to, I'm not going to use that. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.